help with your gear? Hang on. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking singers. How's it going, bro? Pretty good. I'm tired today, but Guys, road sodas. Oh, nice. We're at the Polish Club, Windsor Locks, Connecticut. We got a bunch of shows in the month of June. We got a show coming up in July, so this is a busy month for us. We had a show last night. This is a matinee show. We're playing uh, in the afternoon, so this should be a pretty cool show. Last night? Pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Trying to slap the pizza out of Jeremy's I got another hand. shirt in my car, mm -hmm. but it's one of my, it's a rat smasher shirt, so. <laughs> I was trying to slap it out of your hand, I just slapped sauce on the Josh. <laughs> yeah, yeah you did. Do I have a sauce yeah, anywhere else on me? Uh, no, Sorry. I don't think so. Hi. Hi. Can you say hardcore? Can you say hardcore? Jeremy's house. We're all headed over there tonight. We're gonna have some pizza, swim in his new in-ground pool, which is gonna be pretty sweet, but we got some band business to discuss, so we're gonna hang out tonight and uh, yeah, talk business. Sometimes being in a band, it starts to feel like a little bit like you have a business to run, and uh, there is some stuff like that that goes into it, so. You can have some of the worst technique, ironically, but your sense of timing and your ear for for music. Not everybody's ear likes the same sounds, likes the same chord progressions, but I think that's kind of what sets good musicians apart. Obviously soul, you have to like believe and feel what you're playing, no matter what style of music it is. I don't give a shit if it's the simplest hardcore riff or the most complex jazz Blue, like whatever, it doesn't matter what music it is. It's like you can hear in any band or any genre of music, you can hear their own belief. Musicians who have a specific chord progression they go with or pattern they go with, and if they're obviously have to be in time, you know, playing with a lot of musicians throughout the years. The good ones are the ones that can that can keep up and, and stay tight, play in time. You listen to shit on the radio and you're like, that, that sounds so phoned in, fake. So like, you have to believe what you're playing. You have to understand what you're playing and be modest in what you're playing also. Don't go off the chain just because you had the opportunity to go off the chain, no, guitar, drums, doesn't matter. Now that you recognize that, no, I recognized it before, but I just and was not. But you just didn't do it. Wasn't because uh, we're so new in the song. I wasn't sure if you're always gonna keep doing it. Oh, I'm gonna do it. All right. Once I come up, it's hard for me to change something. That's the problem. <laughs> All right, let's do it. Right, right from the tarp. Right from the tarp. Right from the fucking tarp. What? <laughs> Thank you. 
always loved music. I always listened to like my parents' records and stuff. That wasn't very heavy. You know, it was more like Beatles and Crosby, Stills, Nash and Young, stuff like that. Michael Jackson, of course. But uh, then I kind of discovered other bands on my own. That's like when MTV was nothing but music. So it was like all 80s hair metal and stuff. But then there was like Headbangers Ball, and that was awesome. But like my cousins would listen to metal too, and like I wasn't supposed to listen to that stuff probably. And I would get a hold of their stuff, and I would listen to like Pantera and Cannibal Corpse, stuff like that. And I was just like obsessed with that ever since I heard it. You think they're still gonna play? You think they're still gonna play? I hope so. I'll order it for you. I remember when I was a kid, I would take guitar lessons and I would go every week and the guy would always be trying to teach me like scales and stuff like that, all the, you know, fundamentals, music theory and stuff like that. And uh, I would just bring in CDs of like Metallica and stuff and I would be like, teach me how to play this song. And the guy would be like, all right, uh, all right, you teach me how to play the song. And then he'd be like, practice these scales and I'd come back the next week. And I didn't practice anything, and he'd be like, why do you come here if you don't practice? And I was like, I don't know. Yeah, eventually I just stopped going because I just wanted to learn the stuff I wanted to learn, and I just... That's what I did. I just practiced Metallica, I practiced heavy metal. Because that's what I like, that's what I love. I didn't want to learn Twinkle Twinkle Little Star, you know?
Dude, that looked funny as hell from this angle. <laughs> I remember the first time I went to a hardcore show, I was <laughs> I was high as a kite on all sorts of hallucinogenics. Yeah. Um, and it was E-Town Concrete, irate, 25 to life, on the rise at Voodoo Lounge in Queens, New York. And I remember going to the back room and hanging out with the dudes from E-Town, bugging out, like tripping balls and talking about music and whatever the hell else comes to your head when you're doing that kind of shit and all of a sudden like the dudes from biohazard walk in and like at that point when you're so young you're kind of starstruck you're like biohazard them motherfuckers like they tore with pantera yeah. what the fuck so you start getting into that realm in your head you're like this is a wild time you think about these small venues and these bands that are playing and like all of a sudden all these guys are showing up and like all of that doesn't matter anymore. Everyone's all the same. It's all the same community, the same family type of thing. And that's when I knew that that was kind of the direction in the music world that I wanted to go. It's fucking awesome. Changed my life. Changed my life. <laughs> You hit record! We're magicless. We got the good deli stuff here late at night.
there tonight. It looks a lot better. <laughs> Dude, that's some of the best shit What's ever in a movie. Going on? How are you? Jeremy, Jeremy. Oh boy, there he is. Yo, yo, yo! What's up? Howdy. What's up? Oh shit, I gotta edit that out. <laughs> huh? Outside, you're like dying in here. It's like cold as shit. It's cold. Get the fuck out of here! <laughs> it just really? Hi, Kate. What's up? Oh man. I was like, I everyone's gonna show up. It's gonna be goddamn dark. Gonna have some? Yeah, uh, you can damn right. I'm gonna have some. Taylor got you some salad. You can have salad. 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 Mm-hmm. You mm -hmm. want salad? Mm-hmm. I got. <laughs> <laughs> Is it salty enough now? I got pepperoni on it. Yeah. I bet you you got like the perfect amount of salt that stayed on there. I tried not to shoot directly onto a pepperoni. You got a problem? With, you got a problem with the roni? No. Yo, if one bites my leg, bro, just shoot it. What the fuck? Oh, freaking shame! Wait, did you get any? Freaking shame into my face! Someone getting from him. <laughs> oh, my oh my god! God damn it, dude! It ricocheted out of my face. Don't, bro. don't shoot anybody in the face, dude. Oh, that's shame. Game Imagine that in the eye. No. Oh. Oh. <laughs> shoot him! Shoot him! Shoot him! Shoot him! Ow! <laughs> this is my buddy. <laughs> This thing is going That's inside. <laughs> Someone was selling one of those. What a great purchase, sale. Jeremy. I know. Oh, you, know right <laughs> you said like, you said like, oh, oh my god, that was hilarious. Oh, I was just it saying still that burns. Just as much. Break a sham. Oh, work oh, off, man. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. One damn bug. It was like this white Memphis. It was a horrible, horrible guitar. <laughs> and I was playing with like, cause I went to reform school and there was a few dudes that had like a band in reform school and they just came up to me and were like, hey, you play bass, right? And I was like, yeah. And I, of course, never played bass at all. So I just like down tuned this Memphis guitar and I was playing a Memphis guitar down tuned with my fingers playing bass. And they were playing like, just, we were playing awful, awful stuff. Because <laughs> we were like 14 years old. It was terrible. And we were doing mostly like Nirvana covers. And then I, eventually the drummer left the band and I became the drummer. Yeah, Corey Terra was definitely, like I liked Slipknot an awful lot. I liked Stone Sour, you know, as kind of an alternative to the heavier stuff. But um, Matt from Barrier Dead um, was, was another huge influence. Um, I really like Tim Lambesis, uh, just his scream alone. Uh, you, you can put that aside as probably my biggest influence. Uh, it kind of incorporates what I hear in my ear as like a really pissed off, um, but still kind of has a, a metal grunginess to it. Um, you just hear a lot of emotion, I feel like, through, through a scream like that. Remember when they did the reboot of Woodstock? And I found out Metallica was going to play there. I wanted to go so bad. My parents wouldn't bring me because I was only like 14 or 15 years old. I remember being so bummed out. And I, we, we rented the pay-per-view. It was three days. And I, I used the VCR to uh, record like all three days of Woodstock. 
and I think I watched that video of Metallica playing at Woodstock probably like a hundred times. Yeah. 
When I was a kid, I used to go skateboarding at these kids' house down the street from me. I think I was like 14 years old. And I remember they had like a boombox with a cassette tape, and it was the heaviest shit I ever heard at that time in my life. And I asked them what it was, and they were like, it's Earth Crisis. And I was like, Earth Crisis? What the hell is that? But it was like the heaviest shit I ever heard. And then around that same point in my life, an older kid from high school gave me another like mixtape of all death metal and it had Cannibal Corpse on it and stuff like that. And I remember hearing the double bass and just being like, I remember thinking that it sounded like war. It sounded like music, but like war. And it was just like the coolest stuff I ever heard. That's the process. Mess up, start over. Let's try this again. Everything kind of blossomed from from the first band. Uh, like I can say probably Mudvayne and Slipknot were probably the heaviest bands that I started out listening to. And I remember thinking to myself, I just want it to be heavier. I want it to be heavier. And progressively got into bands like Kill Switch, um, All That Remains back in the day, and you know eventually branched out into hardcore, Barrier Dead. Um, so bands that kind of bridge the gap of Muir, those are all all bands that kind of branched out from from the original, uh, you know, the first couple of bands I liked. We call you as a fan of a You are the reason! I just love the environment, man. I love playing the music. I you know, love the aggression behind it. Always been a passion of mine. Oh, yeah, for sure. There's nothing nothing else like it, man. Nothing else like it. Change shit? Hmm. I'd say for at least the scene around here, probably when Killswitch came up. 
because there was nothing else like that at the time. And then, you know, we had bands like Unearth, All That Remain Shots Fall, Acacia Strain. There was a lot of really kick-ass bands around here. Kill Switch, you think, made the biggest impression on you? Oh, for sure. Good musician. Um, a lot of practice, hard work, you know, being dedicated to it. Who are you here to see? Your mom. How much do you think this is? Tonight we're playing with Sworn Enemy, co-headlining. We're opening up right before them. Chokeout was on the show. We're at the tank in Agawam. This is gonna be a sick show, sick, sick show. Pumped about this. We're going on next. Get ready for it.
you much. For those of you who don't know us, we are concrete ties out of Western Mass.
Just got done playing our set. Sworn Enemy's about to go on. That was awesome. That was awesome. Great job, dude. Oh, thanks. You guys fucking killed it. Appreciate it.